Hello and welcome back to the Edain Moth of Baphomet Left 2, The Rise of the Witch King, as we continue on the second fa sub faction of the dwarves. But before we get into that, I need to be a little bit serious. Um, for those that don't, um, that don't know much about the um, coronavirus outbreak, um, it is forcing a lot of people into um, self isolation. And unfortunately, I need to start working from home. And eventually, that could lead to me myself being in isolation. Which means I won't be able to record these videos because I won't be at the location where my computer is. So um, if you don't see any um, content in the next week or two, it may be because um, self-isolation, not able to record. I have an idea where I might record some videos for another mod, not, comment not, not commentated on because I won't have a, my microphone. But if... Um, if it gets to a point where I want to try and record some stuff, but don't have access to my computer, I do have my laptop with the uh, Age of the Ring mod um, installed. So I might do some skirmish battles on that, go against some brutal AIs, see, just ha try and have some fun, and just, and just um, add them onto the channel, as a, ju just to um, stop the channel going a bit stale for a bit. Anyway... Back to what's at hand. The Dwarves of the Iron Hills against Mordor. I'm probably doing the worst matchup right now. Because Mordor Orcs are surprisingly faster than Dwarves. And that is a big detriment. Because only the Dwarves of Ered Luwin have an advantage against um, Mordor. Because they have the increased speed. But, you know... Got to have a challenge every now and again. And I feel like playing against Angmar the last two videos made it a bit too easy. So I'll be building double towers and building mineshaft. And another mineshaft. Then up here we're going to build two lumber mills. Actually no, we're going to build one lumber mill and a mineshaft. I was going to build the Dwarven Forge. So not start, so start with no heroes this time. Um, and you may be thinking, oh, you can just get the Scout Hero. We don't technically have a Scout Hero. We have the Scouts of the Iron Hills, which are ram-riding dwarves that uh, give vision and, um, yeah, that's about it. But later on, they can be upgraded to become a fully, um, de your, your designated cavalry unit. That's right, dwarves have cavalry. The dwarves of the Iron Hills do, at least. They are the more defensive of the three factions Originally, the more aggressive faction because of the fact they had the Scouts of the Iron Hills. Although, I think to begin with, they didn't. I think they originally had um, Bilbo before the Scouts were implemented. Uh, but they have been implemented since then. Been a long time since they weren't implemented. And, yeah, we're going to be fa fighting against a lot of Kirith Ungol Orcs. So, we're going to have a bit of trouble. A bit of trouble. Dealing with uh, Mordor. I am not going to extend forward. Because because we are a more defensive faction. Well the more defensive faction. It's better for us to stay um, near our base. In one location. Where we can try and outmaneuver the enemy. Naturally I am slightly uh, more um, proficient with this faction. Because I must admit I do enjoy the um, dwarves of the... The Iron Hills. We're going to start by getting... Uh, we're just going to go straight for the, for the Econ upgrade, actually. Let's not let's not go straight into our weapon upgrades yet. I think that may, may be a bit too soon. And like I mentioned last video, where um, the, need of the need for fire arrows arises more in Ered Luin and uh, the Iron Hills. Because your, archer, your uh, ranged unit aren't axe throwers anymore. They are uh, crossbowmen and bowmen for, the, for Ered Luin. They shall fear the sight of our beards. Have the best... That is the best quote. Just, that is just the best quote. I'm going to start by just building up and put guardians and crossbowmen. Because um, the phalanx cost an extra 100. And they don't really do that much better against the AI. Keep away from those wargs because they will absolutely ruin us. We need to take minimal ca a, a, a minimal casualties as possible. I 
And our guard, um, Dwarven, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Dwarven Guardians, our Guardians, have the Stubbornness ability. Originally, the, um, the Dwarves of Erebor had the reduction in armor for units and buildings. We get armor by for 30, for 30 seconds by 30%, an extra 30% armor. That is a big chunk of armor for your damage dealers in the back to deal damage. But if your, your damage dealers do get comprom compromised, they can take the battle formation, which gives them increased armor and, um, uh, uh, sorry, they give you, they give extra, it gains extra, you gain extra armor at the cost of vision and attack range. Which is a big, um, a big hit. It is a very big hit. You don't want to always be um, risking your. You don't always want to be risking your um, uh, your range. But if you do get hit from the very front by like cavalry or monsters, it is good to go into that stance just just survive an extra hit or two, so you, your other units don't get um, value traded into. We're going to start by getting draw. There's another ranged hero. That's right. Oh, this this faction actually has a very well. Th this this sub faction has a decent um, turning away from the normal dwarves. We don't have um, well. We have we have cavalry. We have um, good archers, and we have an archer hero from the base. Obviously, obviously the, um, the dwarves of Erebor only had um, King. What's his name? Uh, brand, but um, unlike uh, Erebor, we don't get another ranged hit. We don't. We only have the one ranged hero as well, which is Draw. But he doesn't come. Uh, but he comes from the fortress instead of um, the whatever it's called, um, the outpost building. Now we're just gonna walk away because, yep, how birds. Am I gonna get targeted down? No, 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 no. Troll's dead. It touched the halberd and then it died. Draw's first ability is flaming bolts. It does flaming bolt uh, shoots flaming bolts for dealing extra damage for twenty seconds. And I want to say this is really good siege damage. Look at that. That is really good siege damage. Now let's try and destroy this killer fungal barracks before they can recruit anything else. Keep my crossbowmen back a bit. Get some more crossbowmen, and we have the upgrade. Let's get the forged workers' tools like last time. Because unlike other factions, the Forge Settlers tools aren't... Uh, they are good, but they're not as good for the Dwarves. Because your... Your uh, Dwarven Stonemasons are more valuable because of the line of defense upgrade. Which on Outpost you get free of, I, by the way, I forgot to mention. What are, your, what are you doing, Crossbowman? Come on now. Let's get the Rallying Call, because I just want these Dwarves to kill things. That's why I kind of wanted to go for Forge Blades immediately, because having that damage is important. They shall feel the sight of our beards. Okay, we're doing well, and they have a Nazgul. He's fighting a troll. Let's let's leave let's leave him to his own devices for now. Because Nazgul don't gain levels, so they do, they remain just as strong unless um, until Sauron comes out. So he currently um, would be... Oh, it's Kamal. Oh, oh, where's Doggledore? Oh, wait, no, they can just cheat him out. Okay. Can't do much to stop the cheese of Mordor summoning their elite Nazgul out early. Oh, it's so hard to t target things in your dying. It really is. Oh, that's a gore bag. That is a gore bag. Kill gore bag. He's down. Okay, let's build another mine shaft. Call for some more. Go if I know, call for some phalanx now. We've got the money. Let's get them. Uh, we're halfway to the completion there. We let us get oil vents. How would that work on this? I don't think that works on camp starts. The um, boiling oil, or at least it shouldn't. How are my crossbowmen there? Okay, I think it's time we retreat into the mine shaft. Oh, I'm smart. At least I pretend to be. Get inside now. Cr 
crossbowman, get into the mine shaft. You must survive. Ah, 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 ah. Oh wait, no. Oh, there we go. Ah, 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 ah. Everything lived. Oh, that makes me feel good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose that building, but I don't care. That was good. I like that. That, that was fun to do. And now my crossbowmen that are in this uh, sentry tower are going to obliterate the orcs. And that troll is just going to constantly walk around while we heal. Uh, what do I need for this? I need elite equipment. Okay, let's get the elite equipment on standby. Since we've got here our command point limit, let's go into getting more in, an improved storeroom. Uh, don't really need anything else and can't really get anything else right now, can I? I'm waiting for the Forge Worker Store, so it's almost done. Then we're going to get the Elite Equipment to get Banner Carriers. And get the Line of Defense, so we can get a half to... Well, two halves to heal our um, units. So yeah, we've kind of got it all set settled. Yeah, against a faction like Mordor that can spam out infinitely, you don't want to rush. You rush, you die. The enemy, not so much. Well, yeah, you don't rush because if you because um, orcs are really weak against um, buildings because they because um, as I mentioned in other overview videos, but you probably haven't seen them all. Um, early game aggression to a fortress is a bad idea because you just really if it, if it's a it's a castle start, there's no way you're getting through their defenses. If it's a camp start. Um, the right factions just have the perfect tools to defend themselves, like we do, the line of defense. I mean, I was getting King Dane because why not? why not? Why not get the most OP dwarf there ever was to exist? Except for Gimli. Except for Gimli. But he, but he um, suicided in the last video, so yeah, Dane's better. For now. Almost got the elite equipment. So we can start getting our elite iron breakers. Requires elite equipment. Elite Infantry, Strong versus Light Infantry, Pikemen, Bowmen, and Heroes. They're pretty much the quintessential um, backbreakers. As good as the Argon Guard are, the Ironbreakers are uh, tools of all... Um, jacks of all trades. While the Argon Guard are more efficient at just killing off infantry. Now I'm going to wait to heal because we are a bit weak. Just a bit weak. Just a bit. Always good to have a um, lumber camp or two. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine other resource buildings. So we could get one more, and it would still keep at seventy-five percent production. And that is why we're making so much. You just need to work around the um, supply routes. I mean, I could have made this into a mine shaft, but I thought I would have um, expanded down here as well. Oh well. I think we... Um, oh, yes. I never actually mentioned what this um, thing is. This is a unique upgrade for your Guardian unit. Only the Guardians can get uh, get this upgrade. But um, for the Dwarves of Erebor, it's the War Masks, which reduces enemy armor. But the Tower Shields allow Guardians to post a Tower Shield upgrade, which increases their resistance against ranged attacks by 50%. When you're fighting against, when you're fighting against a faction that is mainly um, melee, uh, that is really good. It would, uh, but the thing is, it would be a lot better with another faction, with any of the other two dwarven factions, because they don't have cavalry, so they can't charge unless well, unless you include battle dragons. But then you need to get a new building to get them, and all and sometimes on a campsite you don't have that extra building, so it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, I need to get the forge workers' tools, settlers' tools, even wherever they are. Wow, they just rushed right for my base. Okay. I'm going to ignore these because they're a bit further on the outskirts. A lot easier to defend. I'm going to kill a Nazgul. Ha ha ha. Um, all my laborers are dead, aren't they? I might let this get destroyed and then build another mine shaft. Because we currently have... Oh no, we have all 30% um, cost reduction for our upgrades. Well, our Guardians are level 2 at least. And we don't have any Phalanxes alive yet anymore. 
Uh, we are going to get some of those scouts. We're going to get a scout. Just so I can show what they do. Because they are, they are pretty unique. I'll go with what Dane does soon. Just don't have the time for it. Oh, they stopped attacking my building. Build some more lum uh, lum lum li li lumberers? Laborers. Laborers, that's the word. <coughs> don't worry, that's just a flammy cough, not I um a sickness cough. Because they're right in, in my face, don't lose any damage, but gain a crap ton of armor. And then Draw can boost that even more with his palisade. Or Pavas even. Place this Pavas on the ground for 30 seconds. Uh, he is protected in the vicinity of the Pavas. And gaining armor and further armor against range attacks. Okay, it's only for him. I thought it, I thought it affected other units. That's, oh well. So the scouts. You require Narin on the battlefield, which is another one of our heroes. And the scouts um, call to command a group troop of ram riders. So we're going to try and keep this guy alive. He does trample. Granted, there's not very much damage, but he does trample. And he does um, take the aggro of our cave troll friend buddy over there. And we already have time for the Dwarven runes. I know I, know I didn't show them off last time, but we're going to show them off in great detail this time. Oh, and he's dead. Oh no, he's going to destroy my lumber mill. No, no, bad. Bad troll, damn it. Oh well. Okay, because these aren't anymore in, aren't in melee range anymore. Look how long they lasted. Look how little damage they took. They're level, th they're level three um, Dwarven crossbowmen, and they've taken very little damage. Imagine with them having even more armor and even more damage. Oh, we do have a unit of Phalanx alive. Upgrade with Forge Blades. Yeah, I just built another mine shaft because we've already got... We're still only at 10, so we are still making the same amount of money as we were a few seconds ago. But how's the Forge Settlers tool coming? A long way to go. So then, since we're kind of holding on to this land right now... Let's get those Ram Riders out, shall we? Dulenu! So now they have the same ability. They have um, increased range, but they no longer scout out enemy units. They can't um, reveal hidden enemy units. They have the take of the horns. Enemies who get trampled by the Ram Riders lose damage for 10 seconds, and pikemen do 20% less, because obviously pikemen are better against cavalry, so it makes sense. I'm going to put my cavalry on a separate command group. Because otherwise I'm just going to keep watching them die. And I don't like doing that. I'm going to take them on around this way. Actually, no. No, 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 no. We're going to take these this way. We're going to take our main army this way to deal with that Kirifungal barracks. I do not want them leaving, uh, keeping that up. I'll eventually go over what... Oh, for God's sake. They have them everywhere. They're everywhere. R fall back. So what does Norin do? Nearby heroes, heroic units, and elite units. By the way, these are a, a um, they are a heroic unit because they're linked to a hero. I feel like that's how it works. Uh, gain armor and gather experience faster. The effect persists for 30 seconds after Norin has left their vicinity. The ability can be activated to temporarily give Norin speed. So now he a fast dwarf. Now before they would see the day when there was a fast dwarf. Now let's see how the trample works against normal pikemen. Oh no, there's some in Kirifongo pikemen. Nope. Well, Norin took very little damage, but dealt out a decent amount of punishments. I like it. King Nain's level 10 adventure will go over what he does. Why is he there, though? Come on, Dane, you can survive this. No, they're attacking the base. Oh no, they've got a Dark Marshal. I know what I'm doing. Ugh. That, that troll knockback on cavalry is ridiculous. It, it's, it's thematic, but it is ridiculous. Because my, my unit can't move. Well, at least we can trample orcs. And I hope kill them. That fire arrow up. Okay, I think it's time we talk about these upgra these upgrades. The Rune of Invi 
in, of inviolability gives a building armor permanently. Eyes in the vicinity of the designated building gain armor and damage. Okay, I'm going to have to protect Dane by pulling him back a bit. I think it's time we build our outpost too. How do we not have Mithril Mail yet? I've already purchased it. I can't tell. No, why is it taking so long? Get yeah, Lumber Mill. To battle, to battle, sons of Durin. Oh, that one phalanx died, fought to the very end. Get Cox Ravens in here to the extra armor buff, buff. I throw him in the back and he still gets to the front. <laughs> That's King Dane for you. Let us get foreign. Actually, no, let's get Murrin first. Okay, I think it's time to go over what Dane does. Rising Rage. Dane's rage increases with every attack against enemies. What was that? That's a level 5 crossbow unit right there for you. Give them extra armor. And they can't... It takes, what, 3 hits? 4 hits now to kill that? 3 hits. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, there's too much to go over in too little time. Anyway, other runes. Rune of Inspiration gives units armor and uh, damage in the nearby vicinity, and that persists for a little bit while. So, so, a little while, so like a um, Baroque statue. Let's get the Arab Mithrim Bastion. Go over that soon. Um, what's next? Rune of Power. Um, designated bone will be repaired every 20 seconds. 50 hit point, 500 hit points will be restored. Let's throw it onto there, so it's more protected. Get some more lumberers. Oh no, we've already got four. I guess the laborers that survived the other um, area survived. Well, those, those other. My other laborers from the original lumber mill survived. And then there's rune of productivity. The designated targeted building trains uh, units faster, or it's a, if it's an economy building, it generates more resources. And buildings can be equipped with all four runes. And they are visible on the build and the actual building somewhere. Some are a little bit easier to find. Some, not so much. Okay, Dan, I'm going to ask that you take a different command group and go a bit further away. Go straight into the upgrades in here. Oh, yeah. not uh, For those of you that missed the, the bombard, Noring gets bombard. Instant cast. Not much damage. Oh no, there we go. It was Dane that, that did his, his power. Okay, so he's back in the command group and fighting. Okay. I am all out of infantry. Oh, look, we've got Iron Breakers now. That'll be fine. We've got Iron Breakers. We're fine. We're fine. We've got Mithril Mail. It's getting hard to concentrate over it on everything. It's just too much. We have 10 power points. We can already get the Citadel. Okay. Okay. Really? Because I haven't been building enough. Or been building too quickly. Oh, Sauron's here. He's not going to last. Narin, you can kill him on your own with the Ram Riders. Keep it moving. Yep, goodbye. I mean, he was running away from you, so that kind of made him a little bit weaker. Noran's other abilities. Cease fire. For 30 seconds, designated enemy, hero, or monster cannot be attacked or attacked, and any abilities cast during the cease fire will take twice as long to reload. So, um, powerful spell-based hero like Gandalf, um, if he's going to wizard blast a word of power, it's all he can do. But then um, it takes longer for it to get back. I think Gandalf was a bad um, example because I think that's kind of the um, the opposite of what you want to do on Gandalf is make him invulnerable, so you can just word of power and or, and then just walk away. <laughs> I think that's the worst thing you want to happen. Anyway, I never mentioned what these powers are. The Border Wardens are just um, spear throwing dwarves from Erid Mithrin that can just um, 
yeah, the spear or anything that comes close. There's quite a few, four in total. Dragon Trophies, I believe, is a D is basically the House of Lamentation from um, Vanilla Angmar. Um, reduces enemy armor and um, leadership. And then we have the additional Hall of Warriors, which increases recruitment speed and production for 50 seconds. Always fun. And then we got the Mighty Catapult. I'm trying to narrate here. Okay, do you mind? Oh wait! Oh oh, that's a, so so that that tower is a, uh, fire arrows on uh, just in, um, normally it doesn't need um the upgrade from the fortress because I haven't bought it. I haven't bought that fortress upgrade yet. It kind of seems pointless seeing I'm hardly defending the base. I'm just pushing forward. I'm asserting my um. I was gonna say independence. I'm asserting my dominance. Let's not have them go in. Let's have the crossbowmen go in. And then kill off these halberdiers. Oh, that damage. And they haven't even got fire arrows yet. Oh, that's beautiful. I normally hate having to fight the Kirifungal units because they're so cheap and so powerful, but today's an exception. I'm having fun fighting the Kirifungal units and just beating the absolute hell out of them. Oh, it's fun. And we can't get any more of these because we've held command point limits. So let's just um, hit our command point cap by getting more units. So, what's so, what's so special about the Iron Breakers that I think they're better than the um, Archangard? They can switch their weapons between a pickaxe and a sword and shield. So, currently they're in their pickaxe state, so they uh, hit with the um, two hand. And the pickaxe knock enemy back, but the dwarves have less armor because the shield gives them armor. Originally, that was a damage increase to. Um, I think what was a damage increase to? It was a damage increase to buildings, but because they're no longer in an aggressive, the aggressive faction of the two, well, the, of the three. I keep saying two because Erebor and Iron Hills have always have only two that switch between aggressive and defensive. Um, the Ered Ere Luin are a bit of a um, unique case. They are a very, very unique case. And that's why they're coming last. Oh, the lag. Oh, the lag. Oh, no. No, no, no. How do I stop that again? I... No, I went into the power tree. Okay, problem solved. See, I remember things. I do. I and mean, I never really talked about this barrage. Um, on draws command, a barrage is fired at the target area which deals heavy ammunition units and structures. It's about the normal range of... Um, a normal barrage, but it kind of has, I think it's like unlimited range. And to say that's a tier 3 building, that's about the same damage as a shaky foundation. Uh, but you don't need to be in melee range of it. That makes draw really powerful. In my opinion. It makes it makes, it makes draw one of my favourite heroes when he gets to level 10. Just barrages from across the map. Let's get those lined up. Let's get fire arrows. I don't think we need. I don't think we're going to need siege equipment this um, this game because they don't can't make the gate watchers and such. They don't really have strong strong defenses. King Dane's level ten. Um, he's lost the ability. Um, originally Dane, um, had the ability to summon uh, units from all three dwarven factions. Then they changed it around to the dwarf, the um, er Dane of Erebor. Had that power, and um, the power that the original Dane of Erebor had was a uh, summon a building where he could recruit all the troops of the I of the Iron Hills, Ered Luin, and Erebor from. People thought that was a bit too powerful. Uh, people, I imagine, thought that was a bit too powerful because it really was. So they've now changed it to Army of the Iron Hills. Summon several Iron Breakers uh, to his side, depending on his rage. On his boar, summon he summons Ram Riders instead. So I never actually really went over everything about Dane because we're, we're now only now at level nine. So it's like, uh, okay, let's go. Let's go over it all properly now, shall we? First ability: Rising Rage. Uh, after five attacks, he deals damage in an area and gains armor. After ten attacks, he strike. He strikes throw enemies to the ground. And he cannot be knocked down himself. His next ability is Rupturing Strike, which Dane attacks target enemy with such strength that he cracks open the ground around him, knocking all enemies off their feet, leaving enemy 
uh, leaving behind ruptured territory, showing slowing enemies by 30%. Uh, slow is doubled at full rage. Let's get these runes on here. Throw out a lone tower. Then he can ride his boar, but unlike the original Dame, we only had to have to strike once to get his buff. He has to be at full rage, so he needs to be... He has to have attacked at least 10 times in 20 seconds. So he then gets a big buff that allows him to ride his boar. Not as fast as other steeds, but deals increased trample damage. Doesn't slow down when, while trampling enemies on ruptured territory. So you can um, rupture strike... Then mount a dis uh, mount. Then you can mount. It should just be mount ball, not mount dismount, because you can't. You don't choose when you dismount. You dismount after the time is up. I'm gonna use this ability, even though I haven't mentioned what it does. Battle command: all ram riders in the entire area gain. Oh, it's oh, okay. This originally was a um, a second version of the final stand. Basic, basically, a massive amount of armor, but you had basically not ten percent of your normal movement speed. So you got really slow. You you start you uh, would move really slow for a pretty long duration, but you would get massive armor boosts and you would never die. It's gonna show the Merrin Ram Riders while I can. Oh yeah, the reason I've not made foreign is because he's exactly the same as his um, Erebor state. So yeah, this kind of feels pointless making him. I prefer just make Iron Breakers. Iron Breakers do damage. I forgot those guys were there. I forgot how many I've made. Murin. Um, I think it's time to talk about what Murin Draw's main ability is. The passive. Two Wanderers. Requires Murin Draw to be on the battlefield simultaneously. But because they're... Um, basically, these com two commons are pair. In, they uh, originate from the Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle, uh, Battle for Middle Earth. The Lord of the Rings Strategy Battle Game. Made by uh, Games Workshop. And basically, they're, they're the scalps of the Iron Hills. And very, um, very good comrades, S similar to um, the friendship between Legolas and Gimli. And this is shown by them, them both having an extra 25% increase on in damage for being together. But they don't need to be close, they just need to be it, both on the battlefield together. Because distance doesn't separate dwarves. Their friendship lasts forever. Through the door. Then a second ability is... Oh, wait. Second ability is Shield Rush. Use, use the shield to knock back enemy units while charging and knock back enemy units. This ability is bugged. It's meant to be like the um, charge of... Oh, no, it's not bugged. It's basically the charge of... Um, the original Guardians from Beer for Me 2 Vanilla. Okay, before we kill um, Mordor, let's actually talk about... Everything that's going on. So Murin then gains... In, um, he does increased damage. Cannot be knocked back. And his greater resistance to ranged attacks. So you, you kind of see the theme of range of ranged attack resistance with this faction. because Well, this sub-faction. Because they are a little bit slower. They're harder to um, maneuver around with. But they make up for that by having really dangerous um, units in melee. You basically want to keep away from them at all costs and just um, harass them from afar. That's how that's how they work and they do it really well. So I have Cox Raven's Throne, so they have extra armor. Murin's last ability originally was a uh, AOE fear like um, Light of the Even Star and such. Uh, but now he has sweeping hits for 30 seconds. Murin attacks enemies with all his might, throwing them back. Enemies in their flat uh, in their flat. In the fight path, suffers half damage. Does not affect heroes or monsters. Okay, I don't know what that's, that actually means. But I'm interested to find out. Uh, and that's... Because as I mentioned in the past, every Dwarven hero... Like, as I mentioned in the last video, every Dwarven hero um, has only four abilities. Because the final ability is the ability to purchase Mithril Mail. Which, as I, as I mentioned in the past, you need to have a open uh, build plot, build the travel camp, take your elite unit, uh, and mix them with a unit of ponies. Those ponies will um, 
and the, the in our case, the Ironbreakers, will go off on a little adventure. They'll come back from Kazadoom and bring with them Mithril. Now, they can either become a very powerful um, elite unit, or you can um, send the first of, the, of their kind into the forge. They'll replace these nice little Iron Hills um, workers, and they will um, allow you to purchase Mithril Mail for all your heroes, which costs 500 for each, but they suffer massive reduction in damage. It just makes them really good. So you kind of... If you're planning on uh, fighting the, into the late game against a late game faction, having that Mithril Mail on your heroes is important because it kind of slows down the ability for hero killers like Celeborn, like Zafragor, like Dermarth, um, the Nazgul. It just stops them from sniping down your heroes. Granted, they can, they can still snipe them, but they have to put they have to they have to put a lot more into them. And your, your, the dwarven heroes are already extremely tanky. Anyway, last ability of Narin before we end this already. Narin sends a raven to uh, to promise an allied hero his support. The designated hero doesn't take damage for ten seconds, and the ability may be used across the whole battlefield. So basically, you have a raven uh, t um, warns the, your your friend of um, incoming. Um, of the incoming enemy. And you just... Oh. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it makes them super tanky for a while. Which is good. Now, before we do end this, I keep forgetting we have more units to show off. The Dwarves of Eremithrin are different than the... Um, no, there they are. The Dwarves of Eremithrin are a bit more unique than the units from Dale and um, Erebor. With Dale and um, Eskaroth. Your first unit is the Hunters. I'm just saying this is the first unit because this is the first one I could find. And they're a spear chucking unit. So basically they take the um, Herodrum spear um, animation. And their ability is nailed down. The Hunters throw a salvo of spears that paralyzes an enemy battalion or monster for 15 seconds. Not usable on heroes. So basically you just have it. So technically you have a, um, a cripple shot on, on a unit. And um, that is not as good as it sounds, believe me. Because you don't, you don't often actually get good value out of it. Next. Dwarves are natural splinters. Taking the name from the um, elite units from Vanilla, or Be uh, Rise of the Witch King, are the Zealots. Originally, they had massive like elemental resistance. But then people realized, oh wait, elemental resistance... It Half the factions don't use elements, so they instead had sprints. Dwarves move faster for 20 seconds and are fearless. So another unit that can run really fast for your faction. What's next then? Well, we have a third unit called the Dragon Slayer, and if I can find him. And yet, it is not plural, Dragon Slayer. If I can find him. No, I can't. Uh, where are you? I don't care about the enemy. Oh, that laugh. <laughs> oh, I found him. I found him. I found him. He's in this clump. He is there. Single dwarf. Yep, forge blade and heavy armor. And he is a, um, quite literally a slayer. Similar to the berserker, but better. Um, heavily armored dwarf, I can switch between sword and mace. So if you're on the sword mode, you do high individual damage. But if you're on your mace, you do um, a, a small area attack. And let's just say he has the same animations as the Witch King of Angmar. Look at that movement. You just you can, you can tell that's the Witch King of Angmar incarnate in a dwarf. And you can tell which one you've got selected by the more um, highlighted... One. Currently we've got the sword. Now we're on the mace. Ah, ah, the mighty catapult. Can we hit the enemy base? Yes, we can. Let's hit the enemy base. Here we go. Here we go. It is beautiful like it was promised. But deals minimal damage. It is better used against an enemy army to... Um, Uh, to lock them down and uh, yeah, 
it's best it's, it's best on the, on an army to uh, debilitate them, so you can get your advantage and strike them down. We've already shown off the mine the mine workers. We've shown off all the um, siege, um, except the siege of the Iron Hills is slightly different. Uh, for, every, for all three of the dwarven factions, in fact, their siege, their siege equipment is different. We showed the original. Uh, well, we showed the um, original uh, Erebor catapult. That's the same as the um, normal Iron Hills catapult from vanilla, and that's not changed in any way. Um, you'll always have that as Erebor, but as the Iron Hills, you have a triple shot catapult. That's right. One shot, two shots weren't bad enough for the dwarves. They gave them a triple shot catapult. However, this is only for the Iron Hills, and uh, Erid Lewin has a single shot catapult. Oh, we have the Grand Hammer as well. Oh, okay. I thought the Grand Hammer was um, for Erebor only. They've now made it a unit for every faction. Okay, that's good to know. One day I will be doing a ground hammer only challenge. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a fun day. I'm Gandalf, and Gandalf means me. Or simply stating this is a morning to be good on. All them at once, I suppose. Uh, we haven't actually shown off Bayon yet, so let's see if we get uh, two more power points to show off Bayon. I don't think we will. They're not. They're not making any units. They're kind of dead now. Yeah. So I hope you've all enjoyed the second instalment of the um, dwarves. Next time will be Erid Lewin and we will be going all heroes because, oh, there's a lot to go through. I've, I've, better than I've already mentioned, the Erid Lewin faction in, um, includes the um, includes Foreign's company. So expect all 13 dwarves uh, to be Invited to the party. No, nothing's been cancelled, Gandalf. And let's end with the best power in the game. Undermine! Defeated one of our enemies. I love that Undermine. It's so beautiful. But yeah, that's the Iron Hills. As I mentioned, they are the uh, quintessential defensive faction. Erebor is the more aggressive faction, although it is more defensive by nature because it's a dwarf. They're the dwarven faction. And it took half the time against the Mordor because I didn't go for the castle start. See, that is why I enjoy a little bit of a mix. And the Dying Mod does give that in relative amounts because you get because of the difference in between camps and castle starts. But next time we will be against a different faction, likely um Likely Isengard, because why not? Why not against Isengard? And let's do it on... I don't know. I'll decide what we do and when we do it um, next time. But I hope you've all enjoyed. And I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta for now.